declaration, or Muru declaration, and they all come back the same common cause. And the question you're going to ask yourself, when will the country have enough money? Because if you add up all those percentages, they don't add up to 100. In fact, sometimes it goes to 150 percent. So how do you expect government to appropriate those fundings? And then comes the issue of prioritization. And I want to thank Mr. Otuna. Please extend our warm regards to him. And I also thank Mr. Morigay, our Sir Morigay, and all those who have come with you. I think it's one example that people should get to know that in medical circle, next time when the produce is due for a program, you should have about six or seven mentors. People should follow you. We should kill the fact that we also love our own. I'm very serious. I found in other professional bodies, they are, I mean, they give a lot of kudos to those who live there. Not, it's not because Mr. Otula is uh, uh, the most revered of fair man, it's because of what he carries. It's a huge responsibility on his shoulders to appropriate funds for various demands of the country. Today, the issue of medical education in Nigeria is challenging in terms of funding. And every 30th of December, every ministry is always shaking. Because these men and women you see in this row, behind the crews, they will come after you to mop up everything that is left. They are professionals in mopping. And every time, every time I'm driving to my house, I pass in front of their office because I didn't allow those extensions, extension, I've met Madame before. And I said, please don't come home. So you make sure that before December 30th, you have finished all your revenue, otherwise they will come and say, well, how much do you have left is going to the common cause. It's just a means of trying to make sure things are done properly. The only challenge we have is that some of our projects are not completely implemented, and the office of the ADF has been very, very wonderful when it comes to education and health. While others are having their money mocked up before they say they're probably oftentimes people say leave me because they know that we're training medical students and we're looking after the health care and the health needs of the country. <laughs> the only problem we have is that we do not have a joint funding protocol. So I'm already, you know that medical education is sort of between the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. When it was Ministry of Education, it was easy. But now that we have this dual funding mechanism, it has become very challenging. And I think too, the time has come for you to create, through the PA now, or the special advisor, to create an avenue for us to have a, a common, just one budget line. And the budget line can be education, it doesn't really matter. It can be that it doesn't really matter. But if you have a budget line that you put for edu medical education, then we know that whoever gets it, we can both agree on how it's going to be and you know, extend it. And you want to know, but we don't have a budget line of medical education. So on one side we pick, on the other side we pick. And while the college is struggling to make sure the students are kept up, we are also struggling to make sure we give our money to provide water and light in the hospitals. It is a good thing that my provost and my good friend has mentioned an issue which must be taken very seriously. Two things will make a university function, when there is light and there is water, the students are happy. The same thing applies to the hospital, two of us. The same thing happens in the hospital. When there is light and there is water, we're fine. So if your project line for medical education captures water and light, I don't know who you have been. I'm speaking the mind of those who are the young ones who put in the college. And so as their leader, as a college graduate, we want to thank you for coming. And we want to take a good look at this. And I believe that why should we look for other sources of funding, research grants, public-private partnership to augment our supposed 50% which is not more than 5%. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we do not disappoint you by the money you give to us. Try and bring us a budget line that will make for education. And like I said, it doesn't matter where you put it, but it's a research grant or a of education which has access to the fund to have a better education for this one was coming up. And thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll take a presentation from the Symphonia Choir Orchestra.
position of the National Council in 1987. He joined public service. In 1989, as chief internal auditor, when he started using Green Tech under the Real Estate Agricultural Development Program, and he rose to the position of director of finance in 1992. Mr. Otsula's career in Real Estate. Climax when he became Accountant General of Real Estate in the month of June. Remember, he was born in June, 1997. And he stayed here as Accountant General of Real Estate Court across administration of four consecutive military and executive governors of Real Estate. These were things of long tenure, traversing various regimes and political climates in Oyo State underscore its success to be as a counter general of the state. The month of March 2004 marked a new phase in the public service network is an able personality, a worthy citizen of a typical local government area of Oyo State based as the and of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The world class accounting system which Nigerian ministry, departments, and agencies have is a dividend of our two last patriotic efforts as a tragic continent treasury reform measure, which includes the following the following the integrated personnel and payroll information system. The June 12 IPPIs, which has streamlined the federal government payroll and considerably checkmated the post workers in the So the government is back to still disciplines and non ministry department agencies and prosecutors. The adoption of international public sector accounting standard IPSAS, institutionalizing the international best practices in Nigeria's public accounting system and the modernization of the internal audit system through the upgrading of internal audit units of MPAs to full fledged departments, in addition to the introduction of automation and pre auditing for enhanced efficiency and effectiveness of the internal control mechanism. It is noteworthy, particularly, that Mr. Otunla, whose middle name is Obuni, just like our own Nairobi scholar, Professor Adishola Okuni, who incidentally is from the same area, has been an exemplary civil servant who ventured into farming in line with the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is more than a mere coincidence that the rendition that we just listened to, very sonorous one, actually started on agricultural level. It is more than a mere coincidence that Mr. Otuna was celebrated by the state government as the civil servant farmer in 1998 while his farming activities have continued to work stronger. Learning from his humble background, Mr. Otuna does not only carry his education as a vehicle for development, he has also been a silent supporter of educational institutions and a donor of scholarship awards to several indigenous students, thereby contributing immensely to capacity building. This gentleman is an acknowledged illustrious Nigerian and he won the National Honor Award winner. Recognizing his selfless service to Nigeria and enormous contribution to national development and appreciating the nation of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, decided to honor him with the National Honor Award of the Officer of the Order of Federal Republic of Nigeria, which was conferred on him by His Excellency. Dr. Kubo, Kevin, and this year, on 29 September 2014. He was also honored by the Rotary International with the Award of Excellency on 31 October 2014 in recognition of his outstanding performance in the accounting profession, as well as his commitment to philanthropy and humanitarian services. The Central Council of Ibadan Indigen, the town, the city, the conglomerate, that has in the desire 11 local governments, one local government more than one state, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, similarly recognizes great budget and positive community disposition and contribution on account of which the Central Council for Ibaran Indigenous honored with the distinguished Fellows Award on 9 
December 2014. Like a typical bowling place that has no high place, Mr. Ortuna was again acknowledged and honored by the Real State Chapel of Nigeria Union of Journalists as Public Officer of the Year 2014 at the ceremony organized by the Union January 2015. Mr. Ortuna is not about cutting and not as a surgeon when he needs to cut, or who will have as a physiotherapist when he needs to build up muscle and increase the budgetary allocation, enjoys reading, family, plays club, table tennis, long tennis, and of course, to match his status, he enjoys playing golf. These are companies that can <laughs> He comes to a civil servant and a victim of selfless service. He celebrated a cerebral civil servant father, as well as committed community and family man. He is happily married to Francisca Polusha Apeke Otona, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. This father of three that we have, being represented here, is the accountant general of the Federation of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I join all of you in welcoming Mr.
tried to work on it of education, of medical education in Nigeria. It also lamented the great trade of high quality Nigerian medical teachers and professionals to foreign countries. In another paper titled Financing Medical Education and Research in Nigeria, delivered at the 20th Annual Faculty Conference Gathering of the Faculty of Civil Services of the University of Lagos in 2013. Professor Kawe Kudusote, the former Director of Human Resources at the West African Health Organization, also declined the inadequate funding of the school education in Nigeria, quoting excessively from the MUC statistics. He concluded that public medical schools in Nigeria do not receive adequate funds based on the minimum required to, to meet criteria for medical education as proposed by the MUC, which until recently was the funding agency of the university in the country. What is more, he said that the cross that cross on the funding of Nigerian public universities is worsened by the executive directive and absence of specific appropriation for research and extramural sources of research funds. I chose to use the conclusions of these two eminent professors to minimize the extent of the foundation of my paper. In summary, the argument of poor funding of medical education has been made. Also, the issue of poor funding of the educational sector is a current and uh, by that education, medical education is a current topic of discussion in Nigeria. Universities in Nigeria are largely owned and funded by the federal and state government through annual budgets. The Nigeria university system is based on a model inherited from the British. In the United States of America, for instance, universities, including their medical schools, are, are mostly privately funded. With respect to medical schools, some of the most famous ones were established and funded by the nation. The private sector funds research and training programs. Discussions are now on in the US on how to remove conflicting private interests from the university system. Americans are beginning to worry about the effects of capitalism on the running of their universities, although they admit that their private participation guarantees efficiency and other development of the medical education system. In the case of federal universities, they were funded with the NUC until recently. Effectively, the NUC was the funding agency for the universities of the, of the 1982, the few federal universities enjoyed appropriate, very few at that time, enjoyed appropriate funding, and so did medical schools and teaching hospitals. During the 1970s, the NUC felt the need to establish funding criteria based on student numbers. The universities were actually funded there. A major feature of that era was the massive investment in staff training and research. The 1970s was a period of oil boom in Nigeria. The economy expanded and received paid rapid growth and development of the education sector. The federal government began to champion direct involvement in primary and tertiary uh, education. By 1982 and subsequently, in contrast to the earlier years, major economic problems began to manifest, forming the decline in revenue from petroleum. Total expenditure on education as a percentage of the gross national products dropped from 1.4% in 1990 to 0.9% in 1995. According to 1995 data, the total education budget represented an average of 11.5% of, of total government education budget. Represented an average of 115 of total government expenditure. Ever since, funding became a major and central issue in the dispute between the university teachers and the federal government. Even though the revenues of, of the government improved considerably in late 2000 and up to mid 2014, the increasing demand for education 
heart that the government alone cannot carry the promise of education, the informed participation of other stakeholders in children's education. Since the 1980s, corporate organizations, communities, philanthropies, international development agencies, multinational corporations have contributed resources for education, education, education delivery in Nigeria. It has been estimated that this contribution is in the region of 20% by 2003. It was stated that the rapid expansion in the number of universities in Nigeria also contributed to the rapid decline in funding. Currently, there are 139 federal universities that this five were created yesterday. Obviously, it's not the one for the four. 39 states universities and 59 private universities. While it is true that these universities were starting to reach increasing demand for admission to the universities, to the digital universities, it ought to have been realized that education, university education costs a lot of money. Indeed, when you add the polytechnics, the colleges of education and the polytechnics, it would indicate that the cost of education to further a state of the government would be enormous. What are the issues? For the federal and state of the own university, funding by way of annual budget, so funding is by way of annual budget. It is in this way that medical schools and teaching hospitals, which are part of, which are part and parcel of the medical education, are funded. The NUC introduced some other into the allocation of such projects between the disciplines in the university when it is reduced parameters for allocation of funds. As mentioned earlier, the basis for funding was the student number, which was used to determine the number of academic staff, the number of women academic staff, administrative staff, academic materials, etc. The parameters are a series of ratios. The ratios for specific in the medical sciences guarantee higher funding for medicine compared to other disciplines. However, since 1982, universities have suffered shortfalls in allocation and by extension, medical schools have been shortfalls under funding. The matter is more serious as there is no deliberate effort to fund research in medical schools and teaching hospitals, which ought to be counted, which ought to be counted in the medical equation of the country. The direct result of underfunding of medical education, the subject, the subject of academic and technical staff, poor or non-existent teaching and research equipment, and poor healthcare delivery. In the last few years, what we hear is medical tourism in India, Britain, and the United States of America. Billions of dollars are spent by Nigeria seeking cures and treatment for ailments for which Nigerians have experts. The difference is that we have no materials, no infrastructure, and no equipment in our medical schools and teaching hospitals. When they do, even Nigerian students go abroad to seek more quality medical education. When they do this, they are willing to pay dollars and sell it all the years which they are willing to pay in Nigeria. Because there is the federal government policy of free tuition in the university. Another area particularly affected the training is training of staff to replace those who are retiring or migrating. The challenges associated with higher education in Nigeria have led to an increased number of Nigerians going abroad in pursuit of better education, education standards. According to the USA Embassy in Nigeria, Nigeria remains the largest source of students from South Saharan Africa to the United States. Large numbers of students also go to the United Kingdom for further education. Nigerian universities have stopped training staff due to lack of funds. In the past, university budgets were scored well 